This morning, I want to begin my message with a small illustration that I read that it will set the stage for the message. I read about uh, a, an illustration of a, a iron bar this long. It's an iron bar. And the worth of that is about five dollars. And the writer says that uh, if that iron bar is taken and make into a couple of horse shoes, horse shoes, it's about fifteen dollars. But he said, take the same iron bar and make it about a 15, 20 screwdrivers. Now, it's about $100. Take the same iron bar and make needles and springs for equipment. Now, it's about $1,500. It's the same iron bar. This morning I want to kind of use that illustration to remind us that there is another material just like that. It's you and me. Praise God. It's based on uh, our purpose and contribution. The value changes. We have been a Christian for many years. Or some can claim. For some of you maybe a few years. But the worth and what we are worth is really based on what the purpose, what is the purpose we are here for. We're simply to come into a church and attend a service and go home, that's a difference. But the question this morning is, how many of us are truly used for the kingdom of God? What's the purpose? That's what the message is all about. So, I want to take your attention to 2 Timothy chapter 1. I was planning to talk to you about uh, verses 1 through 7, but I don't think I will be able to. <clears throat> it says... Uh, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. This book, uh, if God willing, I want to be continuing a series on uh, 2 Timothy. So today, I will only set the stage for a future message. Apostle Paul wrote this somewhere in uh, AD 67 by the fall time, you know, something like this, uh, before the winter. The proof of that is, in 68 June, Nero committed suicide. But Nero had executed or, uh, you know, killed uh, Apostle Paul before that time. So somewhere in the fall of 67, the proof is, in chapter 4 of Apostle Paul telling Timothy, listen, the winter is approaching. I need you to bring the cloak or the coat that I left in Troas with a, a person named Kapros. Troas il vechittu pone a pudappu ni kondu varanam karanam tanuppu varunu ennu parayumbol the winter is approaching. And then after the winter somewhere in the June time period Nero committed suicide. So evidently this was written somewhere before the winter that's the fall season of uh, 67. He was writing this from a prison that everybody know. I mean, uh, is, uh, you all know uh, it is uh, a very dark 
Christian uh, Bible scholars believe that there is no windows for that uh, dungeon. It is more like a, a bare wall, uh, just a, a small cell. There is no heat, nothing, no windows. And he was chained there and he was a prisoner in Rome. Now, this is the second uh, time Apostle being imprisoned there. The first time when he was in, uh, we read in Acts chapter 28, when he was arrested in uh, Rome, that was a house arrest. So let me quickly give you uh, a few things about that one. The two uh, prisons, uh, actually, the two imprisonments, there is a difference there. The first one, in Acts 28, we read that he had a lot of freedom. That means uh, even though he was in the house, he had freedom within the house. It's a house rendered uh, and he can uh, have uh, people come there. Uh, but in this place, he is a criminal, is chained. Second Timothy 2.9, we read that he is chained. Other thing is uh, in a first imprisonment uh, when he was in Rome, he could uh, have other people visit him. We read that uh, in Acts 28, uh, 30 uh, to 31, people could come and visit him. But here in the second arrest, nobody can uh, visit him much because it was very dangerous to visit him. Uh, that's what uh, we read uh, in uh, uh, Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 16 to 17. People were not willing to come there. He was there by himself. Uh, the first uh, imprisonment, there was uh, many believers with him. Acts 28, uh, 17 onwards, we read that one. But here, second uh, prison, he was pretty much lonely in that prison. The first imprisonment, he was expecting a release. He knew that uh, he will be released from there. But the second imprisonment, when the second time he is in Rome, he is certain that he is going to die because he will be executed. So look at that one. He, uh, chapter, uh, second Timothy chapter 4, 6 to 8, uh, that's what we read. He said, I am about to be poured out uh, like a, 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 an offering. He, he knew that it's going to be an. So why am I saying that one? Look at this man. He is in the prison He's lonely. He, um, the, the, the situation is not comfortable. Many people are not willing to come and visit him, which I will prove later. He's pretty much, uh, uh, you know, by himself. In such a situation, who can write something encouraging others? Who can? My God, that's really remarkable. Now, let me uh, uh, say a few more things. Uh, ever since Rome was burned uh, in 64 uh, AD, um, Nero blamed the Christians for that one. You know the story. After that, the persecutions were very severe. It was very hard for someone to identify and say, I am a Christian, and let alone if someone uh, that go to visit a Christian leader like a Paul, that was a, a real big, a risky thing to do. It was very dangerous. So in such a situation, Paul by himself, Paul by himself, in chapter 1, Verse 16, we read that, uh, or uh, 15, we read that almost everyone in Asia left him. Isn't that we read? Chapter 1, verse 15, we read uh, almost everyone. As you know, all of those in Asia have turned away from me. I particularly chose this portion from that scripture because I want to present it to you a Paul who is standing mostly by himself. He worked very hard day and night. He traveled uh, thousands of miles on foot and uh, in, uh, on, you know, in a ship, whatever the way he can. 
He went here and there, established the churches. He worked very hard. But at this moment, many places he established uh, people, I know, elders or deacons to really uh, run the church. He mentored many people in his travel. Three alagale, Tande Provartana Tal Munno to Gunduvanu, Uttri Alagale Warthadu. Pashavida Parainu, Warial Volum, Ilavre Livrim Pui. Few weeks back, I talked to you about Jesus. Three and a half years of ministry, he did everything possible. He chose the disciples. He preached to them. He ministered to them. He taught them. And he did everything possible. Miracles, wonders, teaching, everything. He was preparing this twelve. At the time of the last few days of crucifixion, I told you that everybody left, pretty much. Disciples fled. They were gone. Nobody, pretty much. Jesus pretty much by himself. Can you see the picture? Such a situation. How can somebody be thinking differently? That's what I want to kind of... Sometimes we, we all have problems. Somehow I don't know, the Holy Spirit was kind of dealing with me and I prepared a verse on this thing and really touching my heart to tell you that we all have difficulties, we all have challenges. But somehow I want to tell you, look at the condition of Apostle Paul. In a situation like this, how can he have the, the, the guts or the, the, the energy to encourage somebody else? That's what uh, we can see. Now I want to kind of bring in front of you another individual. He's writing to Timothy. Timothy's situation is really different now. And I will give you more about that one, but just for the time being, understand that Timothy is in a very difficult situation. He knows his real spiritual father is in the prison. And he has been given many churches where that he need to oversee and lead them in Ephesus. The challenges over there, the political pressure, the religious persecution, and all of these things together was really putting so much pressure on Timothy. Apostle Paul in the prison, he is thinking, yes, maybe days left for me. And he is not complaining from there. He is not really saying that this is the fate of me. But even at that moment, uh, he is really thinking, what should I do to encourage uh, Timothy? Timothy's he is concerned about that one. How can I... Uh, Encourage Timothy. That's what uh, I just really want to show this morning to you. I'm very quickly going to you. Whatever is the circumstances that we have. You know, Paul uh, just calling, uh, the, the well, first verse he's saying, I'm Apostle Paul, Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life. Think about that one. He's in jail. He is in prison. He knows that his life is going to be over in few days. But he is saying that I am an apostle by the will of God. Amen. Nobody called me. Nobody appointed me. I did not become an apostle not by own choice. I became an apostle because I am appointed by God. 
so he is saying that if i am called by god if i am appointed by god to be the apostle then anything and everything happen in my life is aware of my god hallelujah i am in this situation that's not unknown to him avan ariyade alla njan ee sahajaratil aayirikkunnathu enne vilichittullavan avan aanengil he knows where i am hallelujah glory to god then he is saying that uh, look at it humanly looking my life may be in danger but i am by the will of god there is a promise of life in me hallelujah nobody can take that tomorrow my head might be gone but the promise of life that i have through jesus christ nobody can touch i am secure in his name my salvation is secure my faith is secure hallelujah glory to god really challenge me this morning i want to tell you sometimes we think you know we always say with a, a much of pride that god chose me from such and such a situation god brought me out of the darkness that i have been and he really saved me he gave me an opportunity to come to become the part of the church but i want to say if you have such an assurance that god called you we need to be assured that god knows what you go through hallelujah is god amen he knows and he is in control we may not feel that way sometimes but he is in control verse 2 let me quickly go on verse 2 he says that timothy my beloved son you know couple of things about timothy his family came from lystra we read in uh, acts chapter 14 So the family is there and the first missionary journey when apostle was going through that place from a place called he was ministering in a place called Iconium all of a sudden a lot of people believed but some of the jewish people the leaders came and said you know what we cannot allow this thing and they were about to stone him so they packed up and said you know what even though there are people believing and there is a ministry we cannot be here they moved from there to lystra so lystra when they, they when their apostle paul and the ministry there they healed uh, by the name of jesus uh, a crippled man from the womb he was crippled but uh, apostle paul uh, said uh, stand up on your feet and immediately the power of jesus moved into this man and he was healed so all of a sudden the the people in the community said oh you know the gods came into the midst of us in human form and they call him hermes and zeus and uh, they began to offer worship to him and they restrained they said no 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 don't do that we're just human beings like this all this thing happened in the name of jesus so what happened immediately the people one group started believing this people another group started opposing and uh, big trouble they stoned him and uh, he was completely on the ground stoned and they thought he is dead and they dragged him out of there as if they thought he is dead believers look at this one Sometimes we believe that we just because I believed I am a Christian I came to this faith among all my people so from this moment onwards I must be secure I must not have any problem God will have to take care of everything and everything should be on a smooth road that's what we think This is a man he is out there to do the work of the Lord but look at it happen the previous city he ran away fear of stoning and in the other city they stoned him to almost death that is lystra bible says after some time he got up and moved away no complaints he said you know what it's over in this place let's go to another place i really don't know the more i'm thinking about this man 
it's amazing i'm hoping that after we learn this series we get a very good glimpse of this man's heart praise god hallelujah so he uh, went to uh, from he left there in the second missionary journey after a few years later he came back to the same place and he met a, ma- a person called uh, timothy so what happened in the first time when he was there even though he was torn to death and everything was not comfortable and uh, you know it was he, even though he had to leave uh, now when he came back he realized that in the first a time when he was there some people believed and one of them was uh, Timothy's mother and grandmother Eunice and Lois and they began to teach uh, this young man the word now second missionary journey when he came uh, Timothy is in the late teens uh, probably in the 20s or something like that you know he um, Paul saw Timothy and said man this young fellow good he has so much uh, fervency he is good so probably uh, Timothy was there in a meeting or something i don't know how did paul come to the conclusion uh, somehow he realized that uh, Timothy is a good person a good young man any pastor go well, go to a church in uh, one meeting usually we can figure out who is in the church got some energy someone willing to do things it doesn't take much to figure out hallelujah so paul said you know what timothy come with me i want to take you with me to the mission field that's where the humble beginning of this man I don't know the whole of the situation I don't know the details about it you know simply because when he called to look at him his father is a greek so I don't we don't know much about him but this young man decided to go with uh, apostle paul now apostle paul is training him i'm just very quickly going okay apostle paul is uh, training him taking with him and teaching him and say Timothy do this one say this way come with me i know is a lot of learning and uh, while all these things are happening and teaching apostle is a play in a man he just moved from place to place so he placed Timothy and said you be here you take care of this church and i'm going now i'm taking your imagination to the prison timothy is somewhere there it's not today's time we cannot just face time and say timothy let me see you how do you do man no It's not the time a place like you were supposed to call him and say how you how are you Timothy no such a communication no such a communication the only way to know what Timothy is going through is when the man of God sit in his prison in his place when he pray the Holy Spirit revealed to him the real condition of Timothy an apostle knew in his spirit my son is in trouble he is really oh you know in a, in a, in a difficult position you know what the position is Timothy is considering how am I going to go forward He's saying I can't do this anymore. Because he is being challenged by the people even within the church uh, because he is young and the older people some uh, people don't even uh, respect his leadership. Uh, when he preach uh, some people don't really accept that one. Some people in the church even though he pour out his heart and preaching they are not really abiding with the gospel. They are not living in holiness. They are just uh, oh, going on uh, their own way. And when sometimes uh, he hear that uh, some other people come and say some nonsense 
nonsense over there. People are running over there to hear that one. There is nobody in the church to hear the message of holiness. Hallelujah. Oh, Timothy is saying, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this one? And he, Bible scholars from all this analysis, they think that he was also secretly considering, should I continue or not? Yani veli thudaranamo. Yannullaadaya samshayatale nikkunnadaya aacharpagarne atmavil apostolnai povilos kandu. Yannadra adeyathin eduthunna karyangala then he said a few things to encourage him. Let me very quickly I'll take in front of you. The first thing is we heard this morning also Timothy was fearful. Timothy was fearful. Yes, he is the pastor of leading churches. Not one, few at least. But he, has a, he had a fear. Sometimes we think we don't. Every one of us at least once go through such a situation we think uh, timothy is traveling with him is a pastor why not uh, he has uh, so much uh, uh, you know the the fervor why not he is really so passionate about it there are times in our life that the passion might die down There are times in our life that uh, we don't have uh, the same thing burning in us. It feels like it's cold, it's died out. There are times that we think of tomorrow. The little bit of that fear grip in our hearts. Fear is an enemy of faith. Fear many a time uh, destroys us. and if the fear is not dealt appropriately and timely that fear can cause so much damage so i don't know my job here is that you know always stand here i sit and pray and what the holy spirit give in my heart i need to be honest with you i need to really deal with that one i somehow i have a confirmation i have been meditating i wanted to present it to you through inspired by the spirit that who is you know having such anxiety who has such a fear well, you know it could be one person here I don't know but this morning coming in I didn't know I didn't say what the topic that I am going to be preaching but what did the man of God was reading he was dealing with uh, apostle Peter he was coming into the jail, the prison he by himself over there lonely if any of you feel that way you're running by yourself you don't have much fuel left in you and you're thinking that you're running on reserve when you don't know how many days i can go on like this this morning some people who have been very involved in a, some kind of ministry tremendous passion and have been used very effectively and this morning sitting here and thinking that what happened to my passion it died down and i feel like i am dry i am empty i'm not being used like in the past holy spirit has a message for you this morning he knows what you go through he knows the fear needs to be dealt i wanted to talk to you about a fear so much that it, through examples i'm just going to quickly uh move from that one no time possible 
seeing Timothy that way, he wanted to encourage Timothy. Verse 3 on verse, Apostle is uh, saying, Timothy, I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience. NLT translation is a little bit more clear. It says, uh, I thank God for you, Timothy. The first thing that we need to understand is to get rid of the fear or to overcome the fear that we need to give a reassurance uh, among each other. Here he's saying that, uh, you know, I want to assure you, Timothy, something. Number one, when I think of you, I am very thankful to God for you. In other words, uh, it's always encouraging for us to know that uh, if someone appreciates uh, us and saying, I thank you, God, for what God is doing through you. Ningalil kuda sahodera. Ningalil kuda deyun chayin ne nalle pravarti orth. Ne deyutin nanni varayinu. Sahodari, dear sister, I thank God for you. That God brought you to this church. Sister, I thank God for you because God brought you to my life. Because I go through a lot of struggle and difficulties. You recognize that one. You come into me. You minister to me. I thank God for you. Oh, hallelujah. That's an encouragement when somebody hears that one. Paul is saying, I'm grateful to God for Timothy. It's nice to know that uh, others remember you before the Lord uh, with a sense of gratitude, uh, not a sense of complaint. Let me ask you, when was the last time you thanked God for a brother or a sister in the church? Well, you might thank the, somebody for doing something, but uh, my question is, uh, do we intentionally, deliberately take some time to Thank God and say, you know what, Lord, I really thank you for uh, such a young man who is always there, who helps me. And I do that frequently. I thank God for some of our young people who come very early morning uh, before any one of us are here, who come regardless of rain or shine. Uh, they do a lot of work uh, for it. And I say, Lord, uh, I thank uh, for that person. There are someone in your life that you can thank God for that person. I thank God for the Sunday school teachers. Often when I sit down to meditate the word of God, I say, Lord, I know how difficult it is. And I thank God for the teachers who take time to prepare and say, Lord, I thank for that person. I thank for that sister and brother taking time to teach and mentor and uh, do the work of the Lord. I thank for the, uh, the, the youth directors, worship leaders, uh, and name it in it all in a different capacity. Apostle Paul is saying, Timothy, I don't see you. I don't daily talk to you. But I want you to know that I, I am thankful to God for you, young man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Think about when Timothy hears that one. My, my spiritual father, he appreciates what I do. What God is doing through me, he appreciates. Second thing. He says, Timothy, not only that, I thank God for you. I remember you always in my prayers. Oh, what a comfort is that. Timothy is going through difficult moments and he knows his, his spiritual father Paul will be praying. But to hear that, to read that, you know, in, from his own writing and to know that, Timothy, I'm praying for you. I admire this man of Paul. 
he doesn't waste time either he is preaching or he is writing or he is praying he doesn't have time for much of the nonsense that many people waste time i want to model after him i want to look daily and see how much of a time is being wasted then i want to compare with this man of god and say you know what if it is paul how would i have used that time some of us say that you know what i don't have the time to go to that place or travel to that place or thing that's what i said if he is not traveling if he is not really preaching he is praying how many of us can assuredly say that uh, brother sister you have been in my prayers uh, i know you've been going through some difficult time i don't need to need to know the details uh, but i know that you're struggling but i want you to know that uh, i have been praying for you i have been praying for you think about uh, such an assurance when uh, we hear that one someone is praying for me hallelujah glory to god uh, I know there are types of prayer I want to address that one too sometime but quickly let me say there is a type of prayer say god bless every person in my fellowship that is one type of prayer we covered everybody it takes 30 seconds and i am praying for you yes that's a type of prayer but there is another type of prayer sitting down the name of the person coming and really calling their name and say lord i'm bringing this sister in front of you lord you know she has been struggling her she is under a lot of fear these days she is worried about her future she is worried about her health she is worried about her children she is worried about so much a thing oh lord i know you know but i it's my responsibility i am bringing that to you into your presence that intercessory prayer holding on to that one and taking the person straight to the throne of grace that is the type of prayer apostle paul is talking about timothy i remember you i got so much to write i have so many things to do but i when i sit down i remember you in my prayers hallelujah these days let us paul encourage every one of us let's you know it may not be possible to remember everybody's name but at least pastors our responsibility leaders responsibility to bring every person per name by name in front of god there is an accountability that way yes it's very refreshing to know that someone loves me enough to remember me in their prayers avare prarthanayil enne orkathakkona enne snehikkunu ennu parayumbala ende vishwasa jeevithathinu nalla velam tharigathu hallelujah praise god brothers and sisters we may not be able to do a whole lot for others but at least these days remember to pray not the global prayer umilulla ella vishuddhanmari anugrahikanam edeyame sabayilulla ella saudari saudarangale kunjungale anugrahikanam 30 seconds now it is in the hand of god no brothers and sisters if you love somebody if you care for that person if you truly mean that you love that person you may not agree with that person everything release take that person to the throne of grace by name praise god that's the challenge this morning number 1 I told you he is thanking God for Timothy. Number 2 he is saying giving Timothy as assurance that uh, I am praying for you. Number 3 probably I will say a couple more things quickly and conclude. Number 3 verse 4 uh, he says 
Timothy, I want to spend some time with you. I want to have a fellowship with you. Ha. Huh. These days, that's the only one thing we don't have. We don't have time to spend with others because we're very busy. And this man, that's another thing It is so amazing to me. He knows that he's going to die. But even at that moment, he is saying, Timothy, I want to spend some time with you. Come very quickly. Because I have so much to tell you. I want to tell you what God is doing through me. I want to tell you God is doing that place and that place. Uh, I want to tell you, Timothy, what God is going to do through you. Come very quickly to me. I want to spend some time with you. Time and distance is not a hindrance for this man of God. Facing death, but he likes to spend the time with him. Not only that he is trying to encourage Timothy. I can see from that words. Great man of God. But he also liked to cherish that fellowship with Timothy for him to be encouraged. We pastors. Not perfect. When we stand here sometimes we very boldly speak. But it doesn't mean that if you don't have that human side. The fellowship. The timely fellowship. I have experienced that. There are times uh, even in this church uh, people recognize uh, something. That weak moment. They call and say, Pastor, I want to come over or pastor come home. Spend some time. Oh what a precious thing is that. Don't forget that. Sometimes I can preach here 45 minutes. It may not do much good. But I can spend it two minutes personally with a person. That will do so much. Because they just want uh, to spend some time with them, not theology. Pastor Paul is saying, Timothy, I want to spend some time with you. I know you have fear. Even though he's not saying that way at that point, it will come later on. I know what you go through, Timothy. But I want you to understand that uh, I want to spend some time with you. You are not wasting time, Timothy. You are not by yourself. I want you to come so that I can spend some time with you. Last thing. Verse 4. I'm mindful of your tears, Timothy. I know what you go through. Imagine Timothy is getting this letter. And probably those days he is so much in struggle. He doesn't know what to do. And at the moment he is reading the first few verses from the pen by his you know, spiritual father. And he said, my, uh, my spiritual father, first of all, he's thanking God for me. Second thing, he's remembering me in the prayers. And he also wants to see me. And not only really that, he's saying, Timothy, I know what you go through, your tears. What a wonderful thing it is that. Children of God, that is what uh, from us that others want uh, an empathy. The good character of a spiritual man or a woman is that uh, we have that, that heart of empathy with others. 
വേറൊരാളിനോട് അവരുടെ അതിനോട് ഒന്ന് സഹതാപം കാണിക്കാനുള്ള അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു അനുകമ്പ കാണിക്കാനുള്ള ഒരു ഹൃദയമാണ് ക്രിസ്തീയ ജീവിതത്തിൽ ഏറ്റവും വലുത് ജീവിതത്തിന്റെ പ്രയാസ വേളകളിൽ അടുത്തി എന്നിട്ട് That's what the character of a Christian. Recognize what people go through. And then the assurance, you know, they may have a fear. We don't have to really go and buy a, uh, you know, secular book, how to handle a fear with a 400 pages and kind of take a 10 points out of that one. We don't have to go to that person and say, these are some of the points, how to get rid of fear. No. There are times that uh, I own my own personal experience to so let the people even online uh, hear, hear that one. You know what, sometimes uh, I, I also have struggle and I come through and when the Wednesday prayer comes, uh, when I see the, the people praying for me, they're just not the really words uh, that I can sense. Uh, they're, they're wrestling in prayer for my life, uh, my family and my ministry, my protection. Oh Lord, I get charged up. I know then you know what I'm not by myself. Sometimes some of you walk towards me and give me that hug. That's enough for me to go another week because that was more than anything else. When a child got in the maturity that's where we develop a heart of empathy. നമുക്ക് മറ്റുള്ളവരോട് കരുണ തോന്നാനുള്ളതായ ഒരു ഇത് യെസ് എവറി വൺ ഗോ ത്രൂ ടഫ് ടൈംസ് സ്ട്രെസ്സസ് ഡിഫിക്കൽട്ടീസ് ബട്ട് ഇസ് എൻകറേജിങ് ടു നോ ദാറ്റ് അതേഴ്സ് എംപതൈസ് വിത്ത് ആസ് പോയി നമ്പർ ഫൈവ് വേഴ്സ് ഫോർ വി റീഡ് ടെമത്തി വെൻ യു കം you will fill me with a joy you are a blessing timothy you are a blessing yes you are a blessing timothy you may be sitting there and you might be thinking a lot of things you might be thinking that my ministry is not of much avail you might be thinking there is not much happening around me you may not be seeing daily miracles and healing in the church at timothy you may not be seeing crippled people walking and leaving timothy i want you to know that even though such a miracles are not popping up every day i want you to know that you are still a blessing timothy you are a blessing you are a blessing to the church you are a blessing to the people in ephesus you are a blessing to the sister you are a blessing to that brother timothy who said you are a failure who said you are not good timothy you are a blessing timothy that's the message i want to tell you this morning you are a blessing sister don't let anyone don't let the enemy murmur in your heart and say oh you know what there is no much happening don't let the enemy convince you that you are a failure don't let the enemy think that your ministry your your passion is over you're dying down no sister i thank god for you you may be sitting here and think it's over but when i think of you i think that oh i thank god for you Brother, you are thinking that uh, you are over, you are done. But no, I thank God for you. How many times uh, God uh, used you to bless me in the past. And I thank God for you. It doesn't matter what you face today. It doesn't matter what your feelings today. God used you in the past to bless me. And I thank God for that. Hallelujah, glory to God. 
and I pray for you. I want you to know that I pray. I want you to everyone here know the church is praying for each other. When you are facing difficult times, when you are traveling in your car, when you are crying out, when the tears rolling down, nobody sees it. But you, I want you to know that someone at the time in their room praying for you. Hallelujah. Some people think, you know what, nobody wants to see me. No. I come into church, I just quickly come in it, I before the adjournment, I slip out of here because I, nobody wants to see me. No, that's not true. I want to see you. That brother wants to see you. The sister was looking to give you a hug, but you are gone already. Fellowship is very important. Amen. Fellowship is the only thing that can help us to get rid of the fear. The reassurance comes from each other. Not to the pastor alone encouraging. It's from each one of you. Call a sister and say, I'm praying for you. Call a brother and say, brother, I'm praying for you. That's the ministry. And also don't forget to tell somebody that you are a blessing. You are a blessing. You are a blessing. Sometimes we may not feel that way. But you know what? You never know when someone will be used for us. Praise God. How many times in my personal life? Someone that is unknown to me. Tell me it's a blessing. Sometimes I struggle. How many times from unknown people I got a call and say, Pastor, I don't know you, but I was in a very difficult time. Your message randomly I heard that touched my heart, encouraged me, and I'm ready to move on. Could you please pray for me? Oh, what a, what a, what a great thing is that. That's what God is expecting from us. Timothy is fearful. But the assurance coming from the man of God that Timothy, you don't need to be that way. I thank God for you. You are a blessing. I want to see you. I want to spend some time with you. If I am Timothy, when I hear these words, my heart will be swelled. <laughs> I will be so motivated, I will say, oh my God, yes, this is great. That's what the Holy Spirit wanted to tell every one of you this morning.